This is for Project 3 Pentecostalism presentation. The first question for it is how did the Pentecostalism movement start? Well, there's a few events that led to this movement, and so we're going to talk about that today. Well, the first person is Agnes Osmond. She was a young lady that came to the school, and she was listening in, and the head of the school was Charles Parman, Parham. And she was listening in and was intrigued, and she said uh, she actually was asked uh, to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And so Charles Parham prayed over Agnes Osmond and said that there was like this glory moment, like he could feel as he was laying hands, praying over Agnes. And she received it. She received the Holy Spirit immediately and got her prayer language through it. And her prayer language, which was different from what I know, or from what I've heard about, which is amazing to me is that she spoke Chinese and wrote, wrote in Chinese for three days straight and that's insane and that is actually at that moment started the movement of the Pentecostalism uh, movement and so she received um, the Holy Spirit and the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit at Stone's Folly House and that house later on was uh that later on became a church, a Catholic church. And at that church since then, 5,000 Catholics received the Holy Spirit at this church. And it's insane. Um, like the school I talked about previously, Charles Parham moved the school to Houston, Texas. And he preached at that new school. And so changing to the next person is William Joseph Seymour. I don't know if I said that correctly, but anyways, um, he is trying to go and find a Bible college, but it was hard for him because he was an African American and he heard about this one class that was led by Charles Parham and he wasn't allowed in because that, because of the fact that he was African American and Charles heard this and decided to let him listen in from outside of the room. So they were still following the rules. He wasn't in the room with all the white people. He was outside the door listening in. And while he was listening in on the outside of the door, Charles is talking about the Holy Spirit and the baptism of the Holy Spirit and that it's an actual thing, that it's real. And William is like, whoa, I wanna do this. And so he tries to start walking in it. He ends up receiving it and is invited to preach at a church in Cali. And so he's actually preaching on the information that he learned from Charles Parham about the Holy Spirit and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And he ends up getting kicked out of the church because of it. They didn't like it. They didn't believe it. It was all weird to them. So he comes back and he actually starts like a little gathering. And so he meets in a house and then he starts teaching all that info, all the information he learned about the Holy Spirit and the baptism of the Holy Spirit to other African Americans. And it started growing from there. And that is when Bonnie Bray Street was born. And it was later turned into Azusa Street. And that was the day of the Pentecost uh, on Azusa Street. And so... Later on, more information about this is Gaston Barnabas Castwell. He's from North Carolina, and he heard about all this going on at this house from Bonnie Bray Street and then soon later Azusa Street, and he gets a one-way ticket to L.A. He's going, he's like, I am going to this house. He finds Azusa Street, and he gets there, and he is upset because it was all African-American people. And so he ends up leaving, going back to his hotel, and his words, he said that the Lord was crucifying him because of his actions and his thoughts toward this group. And so he gets convicted. He goes back to the house and he ends up being prayed over by other African-Americans, all of them laying hands on him. And it's a humbling moment for Gaston Barnabas Caswell. That is just so amazing. Just to put in perspective, he was blonde hair and blue eyes. So he was the whitest of the white compared to these people. And he... That guy actually ends up receiving the Holy Spirit and speaks in a German language. He ends up going back to North Carolina to start a new Pentecostal church, which he calls the Pentecostal Holiness Church. From there, it became popular in the Southeast, and it went all the way to OKC, Oklahoma. And Oral Roberts 
ends up getting ordained at that church. And that is the whole movement and is so awesome to hear. And a fun fact that I learned is that 2 million people, you heard me correctly, 2 million people in Russia were filled with the Holy Spirit after the movement. 